I have an example of understanding the importance of targeting those who are easiest to reach first and why that makes sense. Now this is going to involve a little bit of mathematics, but that's okay. You're not going to need your calculator. Now if you get your calculator, yes, the math is going to line up, but I'm going to do the math for you. Let's just assume that I'm John and I want to launch John's Donuts. And here's the deal with this scenario. Each John's Donuts shop is going to cost me $100,000. Okay, so every store that opened, that's what it's going to cost me. Two, I have $100,000. Uncle Larry died, gave me $100,000 in his inheritance. And not only that, in my job, I can tighten my belt enough that I can squeeze out $10,000 of investment income every year out of my job. So this is my resources. There are 12 towns in my county and I want a donut shop in all 12. This is important. I'm not saying one town's more important than the other. I want all 12. All 12 of them are more important to me. But each town is a different size and have a different appetites for donuts. So some towns are going to be much more donut enthusiastic and some much less. So there's going to be a range. So for example, a shop in town one, town one is my largest, most donut crazy town. A shop in town one is going to produce a hundred thousand dollars profit every single year. Okay. That's great. Town number two, almost as good. It's going to produce $90,000 of profit every year. Town number three, $80,000 every year and step down through town four, five, six, step down $10,000 until we get down to town 11, zero dollars in profit. It's a very small town. That store is only just going to break even. And then lastly, town 12, which is just as important as town one to me. I want all 12, but shopping 12, town 12 is going to lose $9,000 a year every year. It's never going to even break even. Okay. Now you might've seen that I cheated a little bit. I'm going down in $10,000 increments, but the last one is only $9,000. It'll be apparent why I cheated. All right. So keep in mind in this scenario, I want to shop in every town. They're all important to me. Which town should I open my first shop in? Town number one or town number 12? Where should I start? Well, if I start in town number one and work from the most fertile soil to the most infertile soil, and that's the way I work, this is what the math is going to work out. Is at the beginning of year one, I'm going to buy my first shop, but at the end of year one, I'm going to have two shops. Partially because it's not just the $100,000 that that first shop is going to produce, but I'm also tightening my belt and contributing some of my own finances. So actually at the beginning of December, I'm going to have two shops. Well, that's great. Year number two, I'm going to start off with two shops, but by the end of year two, I'm actually going to have five shops because both those shops are very profitable. I'm going to get to that third shop very fast, which is also profitable. And so it's just going to speed up and speed up and speed up. By the end of year three, I'm going to go from five shops to 10 shops um, because we're just gaining and gaining and gaining momentum. And it will be just after year three that I'm going to be 10 shops and 12 shops. And by the end of that, that last year, I'm going to also have a whole bunch of money in the bank. So what we're talking, we're going to get a donut shop in all 12 towns in just three years and four months if we start at the most fertile and move to the least fertile. But let's say we're good Canadians and we say, oh yeah, but that's unfair giving donuts to the people who want donuts most. Let's start with the people who want donuts the least. Okay. We could start at the least profitable town, the town where that donut shop's always going to lose money. In which case, at the beginning of the first year, we'll have one shop in that town. And at the end, we'll still have one shop, but we'll have a thousand dollars left over because 
I can tighten my belt and get $10,000 a year out of my own income. Of that $10,000 out of my own income, $9,000 went for loss. But I've got $1,000 left over. All right. In year 100, I will have saved up enough money that I'll start the year with one shop and I'll end the year with two shops. I will have now bought a town, another donut shop in the town that is totally break even to make zero profit. At the end of year 200, I'm going to go from two shops to three shops and that last store is actually generating $10,000 of profit every year. By the year 209. I'm going to go from three shops to four shops. And ultimately, 2014, I'm going to go for four. 213, I'm going to go from four shops to five shops. Ultimately, if I start from the least fertile soil and then work my way up, it's going to take me 217 years to reach all 12 towns. That's not very good. And if I didn't cheat, and make that one town lose $9,000 a year instead of $10,000 a year, we would never have any donut shops other than that first one. So what do we learn from this? It's always a good idea to start from activities that produce the biggest return and then use that momentum to launch into the activities that produce the next biggest return to target the most responsive people group and then work our way. We still want to reach everyone. We haven't given that up, but we want to start at the most responsive and then move to the least responsive. In the church, like we said, we want to reach everybody in the church, but the most effective way is to start with the people that we're most able to reach most effectively first.